of Buds and Blossoms, A Spring Romance by Luen Wai Ho, narrated by Jazz Does Vocals. He brought her to the party. Chloe McAllister took a sip of her soda, all the while keeping her eyes trained on the young couple walking into the backyard. The man had one hand on the slender woman's back, guiding her past a congratulation sign as they headed toward the drinks table, decorated with daffodils. There he handed her a cup and flashed her a secret smile, one Chloe longed to be on the receiving end of. It was the kind a man shares with the woman he wants to kiss and marry and have babies with, not for his brother's best friend, which was her unfortunate role in this scenario. But this was for the best. It was time she stopped hoping for something that would never happen. Hey, why so glum? Huh? Chloe turned to her left and saw a dimpled woman approaching, the large swing where she was sat. Oh, hi, Sin. Where's Josh? Sin took a seat, setting the swing into motion. She pointed to the other side of the yard, where a group of twenty-something-year-olds in jeans and polo shirts were engaged in a lively discussion. He's with our co-workers. I like my job too, just not enough to want to talk about it at our engagement party. The wry tone of her voice made Chloe smile. Sin and Josh had met at work in the IT department and were always talking tech. Given that her two older brothers and dad also worked in the IT field, she found the perfect guy to join their family. I'm so happy for you, Sin. Josh seems like a great guy. Thanks, he is, she replied, returning Chloe's hug. You didn't answer my question. Why do you look like you lost your best friend? Are you and Dill okay? Yeah, we're fine. I could never get mad at Dill. She spotted Sin's second oldest brother tossing a ball to a little girl with pigtails. His exaggerated facial expressions and movements made her laugh. Do you see him? He's like a kid trapped in an adult's body. (laughs) Ha, <laughs> that's what Sage always says, Sin agreed, referring to her and Dill's oldest sibling. Her voice grew quiet as she added, Can you believe he brought Morgan today? I think they're serious. Sin had taken the words right out of her mouth. Sage had never brought a girlfriend to a big event like this before. It wasn't for a lack of opportunity though, because the Thomas family knew how to throw parties. Mrs. Thomas was a chef at one of Silicon Valley's most popular Italian restaurants, so she was used to feeding a crowd. Both she and Mr. Thomas loved taking care of people, whether their neighbours, colleagues, or their children's friends. As Dill's friend since college, she was lucky enough to be an honorary family member, but not special enough to be noticed by Sage. Yeah, he must really like her. Who likes who? The swing rocked heavily as Dill plopped down on the other side of Chloe. The seat was made for three people, but with Dill's muscular six-foot-one frame, they were packed in shoulder to shoulder. You gotta fill me in on all the juicy details. I hope it's as juicy as Dad's steaks are going to be. I'm starving. Chloe laughed as Dill patted his stomach. Didn't you polish off two plates of hors d'oeuvres? Good thing you have the metabolism of a teenager. You also have the hormones of one, Sin teased. I saw you flirting with Dad's co-worker's daughter. I was only asking her what she wanted to drink. She's way too young for me anyway. I found out that important piece of information, he raised an eyebrow, when she turned down the wine cooler I offered her. So you were trying to get her digits, Chloe smirked. Dill wasn't a player, but he wasn't shy either. He enjoyed making friends with women. She didn't seem like your type. I thought you liked brunettes. Can we get back to the real conversation? Who were you guys talking about? We were discussing the situation with Sage and Morgan. Sin nodded toward the other side of the yard. He's introducing her to all of our relatives. He's never done that with any of his other girlfriends. What do you make of it? He paused a moment before he answered. I, uh, I have no idea. He's probably being friendly. 
His stern expression was so out of character that Chloe wondered if he was ill. But when his cheeks reddened, she knew he was bluffing. That was one thing she was sure of from their years of friendship. Dill Thomas couldn't tell a lie. You know something, don't you? Chloe's right, Sin chimed in. You do know something. Spill it, Dill. Dill threw up his hands in surrender. All right, but you can't say anything. Sage popped the question last night. Morgan didn't want to take the attention away from your party, so they're not announcing it until after. Sin sprang to her feet. He did! Oh wow, I have to tell Josh. We can turn this into a double celebration. Dill chuckled. So much for keeping secrets. So much for keeping her composure. Chloe blinked away the tears gathering in her eyes and turned away so Dill wouldn't notice. If he did, she could play it off as a symptom of springtime allergies. She sniffled and cleared her throat before taking a deep breath. She needed to get over her infatuation with Sage. Now that he was engaged, she had no choice but to move on. I guess it's time you moved on. Ouch! How in the world did Dill know? Was it that obvious that I, uh, that you liked him? Oh yeah. He stretched his arms up and clasped his hands behind his head. Not bad enough that I had to wipe the drool off your chin, but I saw how you stared whenever he walked into the room. You weren't the first girl to fall for his handsome face. Handsome, not even close. Mouth-watering was more like it. With his wavy blonde hair and ocean blue eyes, he hit the recessive Jean jackpot. But his looks weren't her only downfall. It's more than that. Sage has a good heart. When I had meningitis, he brought me a thermos of your mum's minestrone. That was the best soup ever. Not to mention the best afternoon she'd ever spent with the man. And she didn't use the term man loosely. Despite being two inches shorter than Dill, he embodied masculinity in ways her friend didn't. It's one of my favourite memories so far. Are you serious? You sound delirious. Maybe that fever damaged more than your ear. The contempt in Dill's voice surprised her, but not as much as the disgust on his face. Crossing her arms, she scooted to the other end of the swing, which in her opinion wasn't far away enough. So she'd been wrong. She could get mad at Dill. He of all people understood how much losing the hearing in her right ear had upended her life. Without the cochlear implant she'd gotten a year ago, she'd still be struggling on a daily basis. That's harsh. How can you joke about something like that? Crossing his arms against his chest, he stared ahead and released a heavy breath. He looked like a pouty little boy who hadn't gotten his way. You've been obsessed with Sage for a couple of years now. In case you've forgotten, there are other guys in the world who are worth your time. Decent guys who'd love to receive half the attention you give to my brother. Huh? If she didn't know better, she'd say Dill sounded annoyed. Perhaps even jealous? It couldn't have been easy for him growing up in Sage's golden boy shadow. While Sage had inherited beauty and brains, Dill's strength was in his bronze. Muscles had helped him stand out in college football. But a knee injury had stopped him from going pro. That was years ago, though, and she thought he'd gotten over that disappointment. Did he still feel inferior? I'm not following. Where's this coming from? Dill turned toward her and reached out, his fingers gripping the top of the tan-coloured cushion. His expression softened when he met her gaze. I just think you deserve more after everything you've been through. I still wish you'd have let me punch that jerk of an ex-boyfriend when I had the chance. He added with a crack of his knuckles. Ah yes, the grad school teaching assistant she dated for two years, who'd given her meningitis then dumped her in the aftermath. As much as he'd hurt her, she hadn't wanted Dill to seriously harm him. Justin was half your size. It wouldn't have been a fair fight. It would have been fair as the way he treated you. He never apologised for getting you sick. It was a fluke. The doctor said so. You could have very well have gotten it from me. 
We hung out a lot when I was contagious. Fluke or not, he really messed up your life. You've been sitting on the sidelines for years now. Sure, it's easier to pity yourself and settle for less, but enough with that. You need to open your eyes and look around. See what you've been missing. Go out and grab life. He clenched his hands and grunted. By the balls. Chloe smiled in spite of herself. Dill and his guy talk. The heat in her cheeks faded as a light breeze blew over them. But also as his words took root in her heart. Even if she was upset with him, she couldn't stay mad for long. He was her closest friend. He'd seen her through some of the hardest times and been her stand-in family when her parents couldn't afford to fly from the East Coast to be with her. You're right. All I've wanted to do was stay in my little bubble. It was safe for hanging out with you and your family and playing make-believe. I hoped maybe Sage would wake up one day and stop seeing me as only your friend and realise that I'm the one. Ugh, oh, that sounds so lame now that I'm saying it out loud. At this rate, I'm going to turn into a cat lady who watches reality TV all day and talks to herself. It does sound lame. Hey, she winced. You don't have to agree with me. What I was going to say is that it does sound lame, but you, he tapped the rim of her hat, are far from that. You are one of the strongest, smartest, and most caring people I know. You must not know many people, then, she scoffed. Who was she kidding? The contacts list on his phone was three times longer than hers, and he had reached his limit of 500 connections on LinkedIn years ago. As much as she was a bookworm, he was a social butterfly. I know you, he stated with conviction. The Chloe I know worked two part-time jobs to support herself through school. She sends money back home to help her folks out with rent. She started a successful after-school reading program at the library. She even had grown men show up in the children's section pretending to ask for book recommendations so they could talk to her. A memory surfaced of Dill surprising her at work a few months ago. One grown man who attracted a lot of attention when he came dressed in a clown suit, she grumbled. Although she was secretly touched, he went to so much trouble to surprise her for her birthday. Did I tell you, I still have kids asking me when you're coming back. And some of the parents want your info for their birthday parties. That's awesome. I never knew clowning could be such a lucrative business. He cocked his head as if deep in thought. I should switch careers. Do you think the library would hire me to do story time? No, please don't. But I already have a name picked out. I bet you do. He struggled to keep a straight face. What do you think of Pickles the Clown? Get it? Dill Pickles? Dill, that is so bad. So bad it's good. No, trust me, it's just bad. He placed a hand over his heart as if her words had wounded him. Hey, be nice. When you become a crazy cat lady, you're going to want me around, to keep you company. He paused for a beat, his hazel eyes twinkling. Thankfully by then I'll be old and grey and hard of hearing, so it won't matter what you say. Dill Alexander Thomas! Chloe punched his arm playfully. Why am I still friends with you? Because, he boasted, I make you happy. Rolling her eyes, she groaned. He was right. He was a goofball. But he was the best friend she had. Maybe, but don't let that go to your head. To status, obviously single. Age, 26. Occupation, librarian. Height and weight? What is this, a beauty pageant? Chloe muttered to herself as she filled out an online form. She couldn't believe she was signing up for the final rose. The San Francisco Bay Area's newest dating site. As a long-time Bachelor fan, she found the name intriguing. Getting picked last in PE class had been one of her most dreaded experiences as a kid. But being the last one standing in a room full of men? That would be a woman's dream come true. 
And that's what this date in sight promised. Sort of. The ratio of females to males would be equal, but there would be roses involved. That promise pushed her to complete the questions and submit her profile. Are you sure you don't want to join Chase and me today? Macy, her cousin and roommate, appeared at her bedroom door, with a bobby pin between her teeth. She continued the conversation out of the corner of her mouth. We're checking out. She removed the pin and slid it into her hair. The ramen festival in the city. It promises to be slurpalicious. Yeah, I'm sure, thanks. Chloe raised her eyebrows at the sight of Macy's updo. She styled her waves into a bun that was more fancy than messy, but it went well with her casual outfit. You look great. I wish I could pull that off. Macy pointed to her yellow cardigan and dark jeans. This? You could totally wear this. We have the same complexion. They also shared the same chestnut brown hair, but the similarities ended there. I meant the bun. I miss wearing my hair up. I don't know why you don't. A line appeared on Macy's forehead. I mean, I get why you don't like to. But Chloe, you can't hide behind your hats forever. Actually, she could. She had enough hats to last a lifetime. Ever since she'd gotten her cochlear implant, she'd grown quite a collection of wide-brimmed hats in multiple colours and fabrics. Straw ones for the spring season, and felt and wool ones for fall and winter. When it got too hot to cover her head, she wore her hair in a loose braid, always taking care to brush it to her right side to conceal the device attached to her scalp. She wasn't trying to hide her medical condition, but she didn't want it to be the first thing others noticed about her. You know, I hate it when people stare at me like I'm a robot, and it's not like I wear hats all the time, I'm not wearing one now. Because you're at home. When was the last time you went out without one? Macy planted her hands on her hips, as if to emphasise her point. And don't say to the doctors, I'm talking about someplace enjoyable. She opened her mouth to answer, then closed it when nothing came to mind. Between their apartment and the library, she didn't go out much, let alone somewhere for fun. Other than Macy, she only hung out with Dill. I went kayaking with him last weekend, and I didn't wear a hat she added smugly. Macy's hands were now crossed against her chest, and she had on her, oh really, face. You don't wear your sound processor near water. I believe it has something to do with the possibility of getting electrocuted. So she might have left out that piece of information, wrinkling her nose in chagrin. She admitted, all right, you got me. But guess what? I'm finally going to do something fun. Although the ominous tone she used to made it sound like she was talking about a tooth extraction. Don't sound so excited, Macy laughed. What do you have in mind? Chloe turned the laptop on her bed around to face Macy. She pointed at the Final Roses website with its vivid purple text and floral background image. A banner with the words, Turn your clocks forward tomorrow flashed in the upper right corner. The site's cheerful appearance gave her hope that there would be brighter days ahead. Okay, she was taking the reminder of daylight saving time a little too literally, but a girl could hope. I'm going to meet some guys and fraternise and rub elbows. She rolled her eyes. Or whatever it is you do at Mixers. Oh, I'm dreading it already. I think the word you're looking for is mingle? Right, mingle. That sounded less obscure, but still intimidating. But the way Macy's eyes were widening as she scanned the website made Chloe wonder if she should be scared. What do you think? Am I crazy or just plain desperate to be doing this? Well, online dating's all the rage these days, so I'd say you're normal. How's this one work? They match six women and six men, all of whom are supposed to be highly compatible we attend a mixer at a designated restaurant and are paired off for ten minutes at a time. It's like a speed dating format, but they provide questions for us to ask. Afterwards, we rate each date and if two people give each other similar scores, they're both given a rose of the same colour. The same colour equals a match. They match you up so well before the mixer that everyone is guaranteed to find someone they like. 
Guaranteed. Chloe pursed her mouth and sighed. Sounds too perfect to be true, huh? A titch. I do like the part about not having to think of things to talk about. You skip the small talk and get down to business. Oh, and everything's out in the open, including medical conditions. So, so whoever I'm matched up with knows from the front about my implant. It takes the awkwardness out of the equation. Except for the mingling part of it. There was no escape in that. If only she had a familiar face to accompany her. I wish I didn't have to go alone. Too bad you can't come with me. I don't think Chase would appreciate loaning out his girlfriend for the night, though. No, he wouldn't. I'll be with you in spirit, though, she cheered. Look at you, breaking out of your comfort zone and trying something new. I'm proud of you. When you put it that way, it doesn't sound like such a great idea after all. She flopped down on her bed, her hands covering her eyes. What have I done? You'll do fine. You've been through worse. Chloe could only moan. She was going to need some courage to get her behind out in the dating world. Actually, what she needed was someone courageous to go with her, and she knew exactly who to ask. I can't believe you're doing this. Bill sighed as he scrolled down the web page. He placed both hands over the keyboard and proceeded to type using his index and middle fingers. A steady click-clacking sound filled the air as he completed his questionnaire on the final row site. I can't believe I'm doing this. Leaning over from where she sat on his living room sofa, Chloe peeked over his shoulder to check his progress. So far, so good. Despite his unconventional typing skills. If he submitted his profile by three o'clock, there was a chance they could attend the same mixer tomorrow. You're the one who told me to grab life by the horns. Balls, he smirked. Grab life by the balls. Horn sounds more pleasant, she insisted. Anyway, this is me taking your advice. He shook his head. This was not what I had in mind. But since you signed up to play the field, the least I can do is be your linebacker. Linebacker? What do they do again? They do the tackling and protect the quarterback. So I'll tackle any sleazy guys who come your way. No tackling, Dill. The last time you tackled someone, you ended up in the hospital. She shuddered, remembering how her heart had stopped when Dill hit the ground hard during a game their senior year. It had been the longest minute of her life waiting for him to come to. I never told you this, but I'm glad you can't play football anymore. I know it was your dream and all, but it's not a safe sport. Not safe? What's not safe about a bunch of guys crashing into each other with nothing but foam and plastic padding on? His face broke into a toothy grin. I'm joking, Chloe. I'm not. I know, I'm agreeing with you. His expression turned thoughtful. I thought getting injured was the worst thing to happen to me, but it turned out to be the best. It showed me who my real friends were. People who didn't care if I was a football star or not. Like you. She expected to see a trace of sadness on his face, but there was only joy. I'm glad she who shall not be named showed you her true colours. That was their code name for his college girlfriend, who'd dumped him soon after he quit football. I never did like her. And you let me date her for four years. Like my opinion about your love life would have mattered. Of course it would have. You should always tell me what you think, especially about my love life. Well, okay, she shrugged. If you meet someone at the mixer tomorrow, I'll tell you what I think of her. Sure, I'll do the same for you. Make sure you answer the questions as if you're looking for someone like me. That way we'll be compatible and invited to the same event. She leaned in closer, so her face was next to his, giving her a wide view of his laptop screen. That won't be a problem, we're already compatible. Dill turned and gave her a lopsided smile, his face so close to hers that the stubble along his jawline would brush her cheek if he tipped his head just so, which he did. Hey! She protested loudly as she scooted away. He'd only recently started growing a beard, and the short length of his facial hair left a prickly sensation on her skin. You feel like a porcupine. We're even now, he joked, 
your suffering in exchange for mine. Though I do believe you got the easier end of the bargain, I still have to endure six blind dates. Five blind dates. I don't count. Fine. Five. He returned his attention to the laptop and continued typing, all the while reading his answers out loud. Prefer brunettes and introverts who enjoy reading, the great outdoors, drinking tea, and most of all, he paused for dramatic effect, men with facial hair. You're not putting that down, are you? It depends. Is the beard a deal breaker? Serious question here. Chloe raised her eyebrows. Hmm? Do you like me rugged or clean? Be honest, I can take it. He was a no-frills kind of guy who couldn't be bothered with designer clothes or the latest fashions. That's why he lived in jeans and t-shirts at work and at home. For some reason, he was concerned about a beard? You want my opinion? Sure, you understand women better than I do. Would they be cool with this? Tilting her head to one side, then to the other, Chloe took a long, hard look at him. She pretended to give this question some thought, pursing her lips as she studied his face. His eyes still had the same self-assured, friendly sparkle in them as the freshman boy, who always asked to borrow her lecture notes. A grin tugged at the corners of his mouth, revealing his playful, easy-going nature that hadn't changed over the years. However, that's where the deja vu ended. Now that she was staring at him so intently, she almost didn't recognise the man sitting next to her, because he was most definitely more of a man today than he had been when they met or graduated from college. Or even last week. What had happened? This still had the angled features and square jawline, not to mention her eyes travelled down the broad shoulders and defined upper body of a hot guy. An attractive, rugged-looking hot guy. She swallowed, her mouth suddenly as dry as a desert. Was it hot in here or what? Yes, the beard, she managed to squeak out. You should keep. Seriously? Dill threw his head back and laughed until he was wiping tears from his eyes. I can't believe you went full Yoda on me. The beard you should keep. You know what I mean. I thought you fell asleep during our Star Wars marathon. Maybe I'll convert you into a fan after all. Finish the profile, please. Chloe urged, eager to move on from the awkward moment. Okay, okay, he agreed before joking. The questions I will answer. Hot guy or not, he was still a goofball. Thank you. He flashed her a wide grin in response, his gaze lingering a little longer than usual. Chloe drew in a quick breath and watched him out of the corner of her eye as he typed away. He seemed like his normal self, but she wondered if he'd infected her with something. Her body was heating up and her stomach dropped like she was free-falling. Why had she worn so many layers? She tugged on the sleeves of her sweater to pull her arms out and had almost freed herself when she felt a yank on her scalp. Great, she'd forgotten to remove her cochlear implant's external processor, and the wire had gotten caught. Go in for a new look, huh? His voice was muffled through the fabric, but she could detect a trace of humour in it. You better not be laughing, Dill. Me? Laugh? Never. He chuckled, then quickly cleared his throat. It's the wire, isn't it? Yes. At least her arms and chest were cooling down, thanks to the tank top she wore underneath the sweater. But her face was on fire. Pushing out her lower lip, she blew upwards, but the air did little to calm the beads of sweat dotting her temples. Please help me out. Here, let me. Dill stretched out her collar as he lifted the sweater over her head, freeing the wires as he went. Free you are. Chloe took a big breath when she emerged from her blue-striped cocoon. She slumped against the sofa and shut her eyes, fanning her face with both hands. She made the decision to invest in a hat with a clip-on fan, regardless of how silly it looked. What she wouldn't do for a gust of strong wind to blow through the room right 
Does this help? She stilled as a minty breeze blew across her forehead. Swallowing slowly, she opened her eyes to see Dill leaning over her with his lips puckered. It was a sight to see. An 170 pound brawny man, brows drawn together in concentration, blowing soft, gentle puffs of air over her. Air that caressed her skin like the cool side of a pillow. Wowzers, she couldn't believe her eyes or the way her heart was melting at his sweet gesture. You're right. Dill brushed some hair off her face, the ends of which were damp with sweat. He studied her, remarking with concern. You look confused. What's on your mind? Honestly, she had a crazy urge to smooth the lines on his forehead and hold his face in her hands and kiss him, bristly beard and all. Instead, she pushed those thoughts aside. This had to be a rebound thing. Her heart, or more likely her hormones, were clouding her judgement. Who was she kidding anyway? This was Dill, college football star, popular all-around nice guy. He could date any woman he wanted, and he had. Pretty model-type ones who exuded confidence and didn't need to hide behind a hat. Those were the women he was attracted to, not someone like her. I was thinking, she blurted out, that you're the best boy fr bud I could hope for. Boy bud? That's a new one? He smirked, sitting back in his seat. I think I prefer pal, though. Boy bud makes me sound like a baby flower. Flower? Oh no, she'd completely forgotten the reason why she was over. Whose bright idea was it to sign Dill up for this mixer? Hers, that's who and soon she'd have to watch him mingle with five other women. Now she was sure she'd gotten the worse end of the deal. Speaking of flowers, he gestured to the laptop. I'd better finish this if I want. Wait, Dill, she cut in. Forget the profile. I don't want you to waste time going to a mixer you don't want to go to. I don't mind, really, he replied, his tone adamant. That's what buds are for, to support each other through everything, including blind dates. But no more buts. Let me finish this up. The determination in his voice made her swallow any more excuses she had. Dill was a true friend through and through, and now that he'd made up his mind, there was no use fighting him. She cringed, watching him scroll through the web page, then closed her eyes when he hit the submit button. Anne had worked. So well, in fact, that Chloe found herself at one of the final Roses mixers the following afternoon. The website's computer algorithms had led her to a cosy cafe with six small round tables set up in a row. The organiser, a perky woman named Brittany, directed her to the farthest table from the entrance, giving her a view of the entire room, but also the worst chance of escaping. Sighing, Chloe sat down and pulled the flowy fabric of her peach sundress to cover her knees. The dress Macy had insisted on lending her, cute as it was, was also shorter than anything she normally wore. Fortunately, she would be seated for the entire event, and the men would be switching tables. She didn't want to draw more attention than necessary. It was hard enough going out in public for the first time without a hat. What had she been thinking? She touched the small gold hoop earring dangling from her right ear, then moved up the lobe until her fingernail hit the plastic hardware hooked behind it. Her shoulders dropped as she released a deep breath. Gratitude flooded her heart. Honestly, the implants was the best thing to happen to her after her hearing loss. She still remembered how hard daily life had been without it. If she happened to be lying on her hair and ear when the alarm rang in the morning, she slept through it. Eating with a group meant she missed out on most of the conversation to the right of her, including any jokes everyone around her laughed at. Even crossing the street was a challenge when she couldn't determine which direction a car honk or a bicycle bell was coming from. However, all that had changed with this device. It was time she embraced her bionic ear, and embracing meant no more hiding. This mixer was the perfect place to start. She sipped her iced tea as she scanned the room. 
She spotted Dill, who had shown up five minutes ago and was now waiting, coffee in hand, with the other men to take their places. Brittany led him to the table closest to the door, where a pretty brunette greeted him with a hug. They exchanged some words and a laugh before Chloe lost sight of them when the other men walked past. Oh no, this was going to be more agonising than she thought. The other five women attending were all attractive and seemed friendly enough. Dill could very well click with someone here. And where would that leave her? Farther down in the friend zone, and possibly... She winced at the thought. A third wheel. I hate these mixers too. Chloe glanced up. Huh? A tall, curly-haired man took the seat opposite her and raised his cup in greeting. You looked like you were regretting your decision to come here. Oh, I, uh, she stammered. This is my first time. I'm not sure what to expect. You've come to the right person, then. I'm an old-timer. Been speed dating for two years now. The name's Clark, by the way. I'm Chloe, she replied, shaking his hand. His firm grip and confident tone showed her he meant business. Maybe she could find out some inside info from him. So, Clark, how do these mixers work? I mean, do they work? I haven't found a match yet. Their formula must not be foolproof. No, it works well. I've liked all the women I've got matched with. All six of them. The problem is that they didn't like me. At least not enough to go out with me again. Oh, I'm sorry. No worries, it's pretty obvious why they don't. He pointed to his left eye, which appeared slightly smaller than the right one. The medical term is ptosis. I disclosed it on my profile, but I don't think many people know it means drooping eyelid. It's hardly noticeable. Chloe regretted the words as soon as she'd said them. The droopiness was obvious. But in spite of his eye, he was a handsome guy. Kind, too. Who cares what those women thought? You're more than one part of your body. If they couldn't see that, well, it was their loss. Thanks. When there are five other guys vying for a girl's attention, though, he confided, it's hard to compete. I appreciate the sentiment. I kind of understand what you're going through. Turning to her left, Chloe pointed to the area above her right ear. Funny how she was actually drawing attention to her implant instead of hiding it. That had to be a sign of progress. I'm partially deaf. Or I was before I got this cochlear implant. I put it on my profile too. So I guess we'll see if it's a deal breaker or not. A bell rang, signalling the one minute mark before their time was over. Picking up a laminated card, he chuckled. I think we have time for one question. Here's one. Describe three qualities you value in a friend. At the word friend, Chloe picked up on Dill's familiar laughter and her gaze shot across the room. To her disappointment, he was engaged in an active conversation with his date, who had moved her chair right beside his. If she leaned any closer, she'd fall in his lap. Chloe? She turned her attention back to Clark. Yes, qualities in a friend. Taking a deep breath, she continued. I'd say loyal supportive and fun to be around someone who accepts you for who you are but still pushes you to do better a beard wouldn't hurt either did you say beard he eyed her with confusion then looked in dill's direction sure a beard had she said that out loud i never mind what about you ding Brittany clapped her hands and called out Men, please move to your left and meet your next date. Sorry, we ran out of time. No worries, it was nice talking to you. He remarked as he got up. I hope you meet your match. Maybe in forty minutes? Forty minutes? That would be the last round. Oops, was she that transparent? She gave Clark a sheepish smile. She brushed her hand against her chin. Almost expecting draw there. Well, with the way she'd been gawking at Dill, it was clear she couldn't wait to have a turn with him. Just forty more minutes until she could spend time with him, and tell him... Tell him what? That she wanted their date to be real? 
that she wished he'd looked at her the way Han Solo looked at Princess Leia before they shared their first kiss? That was one scene in the movie she'd paid attention to. Um, no, that wasn't going to happen. At least she'd always have his friendship, if nothing more. Chloe settled in for what would be the longest blind dates of her life. Four of them with guys who were equally nice and chatty, but none who made her heart skip a beat whenever she turned his way. And boy, was her heart getting a workout. Now that Dill was sitting at the table next to hers, she was more excited yet anxious than ever. She took frequent sips of her tea, enjoying the chill of the glass against her palm. The one upside to this event? Free refills. A downside? Having to excuse herself during the fifth date. In the ladies' room, she took the chance to retouch her makeup. Dill likely wouldn't care how fresh her lipstick was, but she felt the urge to present her best self for him. Maybe then he'd see her as more than his college study buddy, or the cat lady he promised to hang out with when they were old and grey. Maybe he'd want her as much as she wanted him. That was her hope when she returned to the table and found Dill sitting there. He stood when she approached and waited to push the chair in for her. Chloe, I almost didn't recognise you. You look amazing. Thanks, you do too. For once, he traded in his casual clothes for tan slacks and a button-down shirt. His bright, genuine grin completed his outfit perfectly, along with the facial hair she was growing fonder of by the minute. Yep, she definitely liked him rugged. I'm glad you kept the beard. I have it on good authority that women like this look. Well, I can't speak for all women, but I sure do. Your opinion's enough for me. He took a seat and studied her for a moment. Hey, you're not wearing a hat today. I thought there was something different. Did you not have one to go with your outfit? Because I would find that hard to believe. She rolled her eyes at his playful smirk. No, I had plenty of choices. I just thought it was time I stopped hiding behind them. I've been telling you that for months, that you should be yourself. You were right, she admitted with chagrin. My implant's an important part of me. If I can't accept it, how can I expect other people to? Exactly, he beamed. I'm glad you finally came to your senses and listened to me. Better late than never, right? Maybe this'll convince you to listen earlier next time. Maybe. He did have her best interests at heart. Okay, sure. Listen, I will. Listen, I will. I love it. His shoulders shook as a loud belly laugh overtook him. He quickly sobered up when Brittany walked by and gave them a stern glare. He glanced at the icebreaker questions and muttered, We better start. She might cut off our caffeine supply if we don't cooperate. We wouldn't want that to happen, she joked as she picked up the card. Question number one. Do you like spontaneity or routine? I can answer that one for you, he bragged based on what your closet looks like. I use the Dewey Decimal System for a living. It only makes sense that I have a system for my clothes. Don't forget you benefited from it too. You have to admit your closet looks beautiful. It was until I did the laundry. He clutched his chest in a display of agony. My life hasn't been the same since. I think you need to come organise it again. How about tonight? Sure. Cleaning was as good an excuse as any to spend time with Dill. Do you want to grab dinner first? Of course, we can't colour coordinate on an empty stomach. It's a date then. A date? He'd never used that word before. Did he mean what she hoped he meant? Okay. Alright, next question. Wait, you didn't give your answer. Spontaneity or routine? You know it already. Caffeine, remember? All right, definitely unplanned, unscheduled and unroutine. Just the way you like me. You sure about that? The corners of his eyes crinkled in response to her teasing tone. As sure as I am about liking you the way you are, even though you're not as fun as me. I am so much fun, she pretended to pout, in an organised kind of way. And fun can mean different things to different people. That's true, I can't help it. I like to tease you. And she liked the fact that he knew her well enough to do so. 
Hey, there's plenty of stuff I could tease you about too. He held up both hands in a sign of surrender. I'm well aware of how much dirt you have on me. You know me better than anyone in this room. His voice grew husky. Better than anyone, really. There was a tenderness in his expression that made her chest tighten. And you me. He set the list down and looked her straight in the eyes. So let me ask you something I don't know. Sure. How'd your dates go? The other dates? Who cared about the other guys? They were the last thing on her mind. They were fine. Do any of the guys stand out for you? Now they were talking. Yes, you, she wanted to answer. Instead, she offered a coy smile and hinted. One does. Oh, yeah? She nodded. It's not someone I expected to feel so strongly about, but I do. I'd be blind and stupid not to see what an awesome, amazing guy he is. She blushed, surprised to hear her voice tremble. She'd never been this nervous in front of Dill, but their friendship was on the line as well as her heart. But if she trusted anyone with her heart, it was him. Nearly a decade of friendship had proven that. The truth is, we clicked right from the start. What we have is more special than anything I'd ever had with a guy. I'd love to see where things go with him. He fell silent, the pause lasting longer than comfortable. That's cool. That's what you came here for. To meet someone. He sounds like a good guy. Would he think so if that someone was him? What about you? What? Did anyone stand out for you? He took a deep breath before answering. Uh, yeah, I think I met someone too. I mean, I did meet someone. She's great, really bubbly and chatty. She's a nurse, likes taking care of people, that kind of stuff. The room grew quiet and Chloe wondered if her processor's batteries had died, or maybe it was the pounding of her heart in her ears, preventing her from hearing the fact that Dill had fallen for another woman. Did you say nurse? Yes, Lana. He thumbed his finger over his shoulder. At table one, paediatric nurse. Good with babies, ready to have her own, some day soon perhaps. Lana, how nice. She clenched her hands, which had suddenly grown cold. She wished she'd gotten a hot beverage like Dill, who appeared especially healthy with some extra colour in his cheeks. She, on the other hand, felt sick to her stomach. I'm happy for you. Ding! Time's up, everyone. Brittany called as she walked around the room. Here are your rating cards. Once I tally up the results, I'll hand you a rose and you can find your match. Chloe held the card in both hands, feeling as if she was sealing her fate with a stroke of her pen. She glanced at Dill, who had finished filling out his form and was waving it up for Brittany to collect. Wow, no hesitations. He must really like Lana. She debated leaving hers blank and running out the door, but that would leave one man standing alone. And for his sake, she couldn't do that. She quickly jotted down her numbers and handed the card in. Ten minutes later, the men had been relocated to the back of the room. The women still seated at their tables, received their roses and waited for their matches to find them. Chloe held her rose up, relieved that it was a bright yellow shade signifying friendship. That was all she wanted out of this match, and she hoped whoever she was matched with would be fine with that. A man walked toward her, his quick strides making the curls on his head sway. This is a pleasant surprise. Thanks for choosing me. She managed to return his smile, even as Dill, with a red rose, passed by on his way to the first table. Hi, Clark. Thanks for choosing me too. This was not the date Chloe had had in mind. There were so many things wrong with the situation. From the stale breadsticks to the cheesy love songs playing in the background. But the biggest disappointment of all was that she had arrived with Clark and Dill with Lana. 
Soon after they'd met their matches, the folks at the final rows had led them all down the street to a post-mixer dinner that they had supposedly agreed to attend when they submitted their profiles. This new obligation was to ensure that people spent time getting acquainted with each other, instead of disappearing off the radar, as Clark's previous matches had done. It was a good idea in theory, except for the part where Chloe was stuck watching Dill on a date with another woman. Any idea what you'd like to eat? She reluctantly lowered the menu that she'd been using as a shield to block Dill from her line of sight. Clark's smiling face greeted her. Not yet. I'm having a hard time deciding. Yeah, there are so many options to choose from. Kind of like this whole online dating deal. Actually, I'm not that hungry. I had a lot of tea back at the cafe. Not to mention a gutful of regret. She stared at the menu again until the letters blurred. Blinking back tears, she resolved to hold it together. She had no one to blame besides herself. Why hadn't she come out and told Dill how she felt when she'd had the chance? She set the menu down and took a deep breath. She could do this. As long as she ignored... Ugh! A hearty laugh sounded from the other side of the room. She could still hear him, loud and clear. Thanks to the power of technology, she could recognise Dill's loud, boisterous laugh anywhere. Why did he have to sound so happy? Something wrong, Chloe. She sensed Clark's eyes on her, adding embarrassment to the rush of emotions already constricting her throat. She stood to excuse herself. I need to use the ladies' room. Please go ahead and order. My, how things could change over the course of an hour. Not long ago, she'd been in a different restroom preparing to meet Dill. Now she was hiding from him, and the rest of the world. The only person she couldn't hide from, the one she was the maddest at, stared back at her in the restroom mirror with red-rimmed eyes. Great, now she looked as miserable as she felt. Well, the way she thought about it, she had two choices. Continue feeling sorry for herself and stand up a perfectly nice date or make the most of the situation and be happy for Dill. Be happy that he found someone he enjoyed being with. Someone who made him laugh because she adored that hearty laugh of his. The way it rose from deep within his chest and created wrinkles around his eyes. How could she not choose the latter? As much as he'd always wanted the best for her, she wanted the same for him. That's what best friends did. She chose to be happy for Dill because she loved him. Nothing would ever change that. With her mind made up, Chloe allowed herself one last sigh and prepared to return to her table. She stepped out into the narrow corridor and had passed the kitchen when she saw a tall figure approaching from the other end. From behind, she heard a door swing open and a voice call out. Excuse me. A server carrying two plates and a salad squeezed past her on the right, forcing her to the left side and right into a brick wall, or what seemed like a brick wall. She slammed into the muscular torso of a man and lost her balance. He caught her just in time and pulled her close. Close enough for her to breathe in the fresh woody scent of his aftershave and sense the vibration in his chest as he laughed. Dill. Hey, I'm glad I was here to cushion your landing. She lifted her lashes and squeezed out a shaky smile as she tried to hide the emotions bubbling inside her. Sorry, I didn't mean to crash into you. No harm done. I had worse happen to me on the football field. This was nothing. That's, uh, good. She chewed on her lower lip, unsure of why he was still holding her. The heat from his body made it hard to think, much less talk. Were you on your way to the restroom? He suddenly dropped his hands and his cheeks flushed as if he'd been caught doing something wrong. Yeah, I was heading there to wash my hands. His eyes lingered on her for a beat before he asked, Did I tell you how beautiful you look today? Now she was the one blushing. Yeah, you did. Thanks. He nodded. I, uh, better go. Talk to you later? Sure, I'll talk to you later. She answered to his back, 
even though there was so much she wanted to say to him now. She forced her feet forward, dreading the distance growing between them. Left, right, left. Chloe? She'd never been so happy to hear Dill call her name. She spun around and came face to face with him. Yes? His lips curved up sheepishly. I lied. I didn't come back here to use the men's room. His ruddy complexion confirmed his confession and brought to mind a recent memory. Dill had turned red when he'd told her about finding a match. Had he made that up? Why did you come here? To look for you. For me? His brows furrowed, the line between them deepening as he thought. Do you remember what I told you yesterday? About wanting you to always tell me what you think? I remember. Okay, because there's something I've been wanting to ask you and I can't wait any more. This is the worst time in, and not how I wanted this to happen. But if I don't do it now, I'll likely regret it for the rest of my life. And that's not a risk I want to take. She could only nod because the way Dill was looking at her took her breath away. How could she have missed this? The tenderness and longing in his hazel eyes. She'd seen it before. It was a look of love, sure and true and forever. Exactly like how a man looked at the woman he wanted to kiss and marry and... His mouth found hers before she could finish her thought. Slowly and gently, Dill kissed her like she'd never been kissed before. It almost felt like a dream, especially when her feet left the ground. But the light prickle of his beard on her cheeks brought her back to reality. She cupped his face with both hands, tasting and savouring their intimacy. When they parted, he set her down and met her gaze with a goofy grin. They stared at each other for a few seconds before he breathed. Well, I think I got my answer. Wait, what? She shook her head, still in disbelief at what had happened. What was the question? You didn't ask one. Oh yes, I did. The kiss. That was it. The kiss? I wanted to know if you feel the same way about me that I feel about you. The way I felt about you for a while now. He admitted in a wistful tone. Was he serious? For a while? Why didn't you say anything? He shrugged. You got sick and had your surgery. Then you were into Sage. After his engagement, I'd figured I'd give you some time to move on. But seeing you today with those other guys, I knew if I didn't say something soon, I could lose you. And I don't want to lose you, Chloe. I can't. You mean too much to me. She swallowed hard, her heart breaking at the sorrow in his voice. And to think she was the cause of it. Dill, you're not going to lose me. No one could ever take your place. The truth is, you've always had my heart. I gave it to you a long time ago. You don't know how happy I am to hear that. I didn't know if I was going to fumble with that kiss, but I had to go for it. You know, grab life by. The balls? Yes, he exclaimed. You're finally catching on. Oh, how she loved this man. Why had it taken her so long to realise this? I can't believe I didn't see what was right in front of me. I wasted so much time. He tipped her chin up and murmured. Hey, it happens. It's like in football when the quarterback gets sacked from the blind side. We were in each other's blind spots up till now. Okay, she drawled. That was not the analogy I was expecting. Let's try a different one, he chuckled. How about this? You're at the library and you can't find the book you want. Because you were checking the wrong shelf the whole time. Not only the wrong shelf, but the wrong section. She might as well have been searching for a fiction book in the non-fiction area. Because this real-life match was so much better than any imaginary one. Sure, but you finally ask the hot librarian to help you. He winked. And you discovered that she was what you were looking for all along. Is that right? There was no denying the adoration in his eyes. I guess we needed time to realise our friendship had blossomed into something more. A lot more. He reached for her hand and held it to his chest. If it's okay with you, I don't want to only be your friend, Chloe McAllister. I want to be your final rose. 
Will you have me? The question hung in the air between them like the earthy aroma of a spring rain, fresh and welcoming. They'd both had their share of struggles, but Dill's words signalled a new season, one they could walk through together. It was everything Chloe hoped for and more. Her heart threatened to burst. It was so full. Of course I accept. He pulled her flush against him, his eyes zeroing in on her lips before he kissed her again. Come on, I owe you a date. Our first official one. I can't wait. On their way out of the restaurant, she spotted Clark and Lana, who were now seated at the same table, their eyes fixed on each other. Who knew? The evening was turning out well for everyone. A strong wind greeted them as they stepped out onto the sidewalk, and Chloe instinctively placed one hand on her head. Instead of the straw material she was used to grasping, her hand touched the hard plastic of her processor. I forgot, I don't have a hat on. Nope, you don't, Dill confirmed. It'll probably take you a while to get used to it. You never left home without one before today. He was right. It would take time for her to get used to some long-forgotten sensations, like the warmth of the sun's ray on her scalp, and the soft caress of a breeze blowing through her hair and the gentle way Dill kissed the top of her head, like he was doing now. She couldn't wait to get used to that. She'd been missing out on so much. But she was finally ready to start living. You know what? This feels right. Yeah. It feels like coming home. How do you mean? Here and now, wherever you are, is home. He finished for her, understanding lighting up his face. Home is us, you mean? Yes. Yes. Home is us. You and me. I like the sound of that. He flashed her that secret smile again, reserved only for her. Then let me be the first one to say this. Welcome home, Chloe. I'm glad you found your way. Giving his hand a tight squeeze, she spoke her next words from her heart. Me too, Dill. Me too. The end. Thank you for listening to this audiobook. If you would like to read more books by Li Wen Y Ho, please check out her website at liwenho.com.